First, praying to my most worshipful Guru Pada Padma, Param Aradditam, Astor to the Vasudha Shri Srimad Bhakti Viran Narayan Goswami Maharaj Gurudev, to Shri Srimad Bhakti Viran Swami Prabhupada, the entire Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Varga, to all assembled devotees, please accept my Dandavat pranams. <coughs> praying to Srila Gurudev and the Vaishnavas that I may develop steadiness in chanting the holy names continuously and absorb myself in their service and in their transcendental activities. <clears throat> Yesterday we spoke about the third verse of Shukshastakam, Trinadati Suni Chena, Dororabhastadishnuna, Amanida Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. And how this beautiful verse given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu corresponds to pastimes of Sri Krishna as he goes into the forest with his friends and the calves. And also what is Srimati Radhika doing at that time? What is Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu doing at that time? And also how we can perform sadhana bhakti, our spiritual practice, incorporating all these teachings or the ABCs of bhakti, the ABCs of spiritual life, so that we can be able to actually enter within these pastimes and service of Sri Krishna in his realm. So if we think of the ABCs as the stepping stones on our spiritual journey, <coughs> they make up the whole pavement. So we can't leap across them. So we have to incorporate these teachings, humility, tolerance, respect for all without desiring honor for oneself. And, most importantly of all, always chanting the holy names. Kirtaniya Sarahari. Chanting not alone, but in Sadhu Sangha. That's the meaning of Sankirtan. Sankirtan means Kirtan in Sadhu Sangha. Sankirtan, all together. Sankirtan. Alone, I don't have the strength to perform your Kirtan. Why? Because Sankirtan means together. So these things are so important for us. So yesterday we spoke very strong. <laughs> so I apologize if any of it felt like cutting or gouging or pinching or poking. But today I'm here to give some healing balm, some sweetness, some nectarian rasayan, some, something that helps rejuvenate us. <clears throat> Rasayana kata. We pray to our acharyas and we say this Rasayana Kata, spiritual rejuvenation. What does that come from? Not from chastisement, not from berating someone, but from hearing the sweet pastimes of Sri Krishna. That is the real essence of the Sastra. 
Sri Ved Vyas gave this as the ultimate teaching. This is the end of all the conclusion of Vedic knowledge, Vedanta Sar. The essence of Veda, Anta, the final culmination of the Veda is what? Srimad Bhagavatam. And the essence of the Srimad Bhagavatam is the passage of Sri Krishna in the 10th canto. Sarva Vedanta Saran Hi Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate. Tad Rasamrita Tripta Syanan Yatrasya Driti Kochit. Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta, and the Vedanta is the summary of, in conclusion of all knowledge, of all spiritual knowledge, the Vedanta. And the essence of the Vedanta is the Srimad Bhagavatam, and the essence of the Srimad Bhagavatam is the passage of Sri Krishna in, spirit, in Vrindavan Dham. So, therefore, we'll discuss the beautiful pastimes of how Sri Krishna enters into the forest, as described by our Acharyas, especially by our most worshipful Sri Sri. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami in his, in his writings. Very beautiful pastimes. So it's very sweet. This is important because it corresponds to what we heard yesterday. So all those lessons we heard yesterday, like we said, two tracks of a, 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 you know, on a train, one side and the other side. One is our sadhan, how we are doing our practice. The other is Krishna Lila. So how does Sri Krishna enter into the forest? We think, oh, Krishna just goes into the forest. It's not so simple. Mm -hmm. Oh, Krishna went into the forest. No. What are the details? That's where the juice is. Who knows? What are the details? What's the juicy parts? <coughs> Brindavan is full of juice, rasa. So what is Brindavan? What is Krishna's pastimes? What is the, the genre? Krishna's pastimes, they are a divine romance adventure. So when Krishna enters into the forest, all these kind of dramatic elements are present. Krishna entering into the forest is especially sweet. In Nanda Bhavan, Krishna is bound, confined in Vatsalya Ras, the parental affection of his elders, Madhya Shoda and Nanda Bhavan. And it's very sweet. But in Braj, what is the Adiras? Who knows Adiras? Adiras means the original mellow. What is that? Sringaras. The relationship between Sri Radha and Krishna. That's why in all our temples we have Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. Any Gaudiya Vaishnava temple. Even Krishna Balaram is there, but Radha Krishna will also be there in another Prakosht, like we see in Raman Veti Krishna Balaram. Radha Shamsunda and Aditya Vishaka are also there in one department. So Adi Ras, this is the original mellow of divine love. <clears throat> so what is that? What is that attraction and relationship between Shakti and Shakti Man, Shri Radha and Shri Krishna? We can hear about it, we can philosophize and discuss about it, but really by hearing about Krishna Kata and by following the process of bhakti, this can arise in our hearts and we can develop some experience and relationship by that service of Harikata. More important, Gurudev would say, than just reading and studying on our own is Harikata. Because together we're trying to serve that divine teaching. So therefore, Gurudev said, Harikata is actually Kirtan and Sukadev Goswami is the best Kirtaniya. And Sukadev Goswami described Krishna's Leela in Vrindavan. So Krishna, he was thinking... If we look at Astakalya Lila, the daily pastimes of Radha Krishna, from about 8.30 till about 5, just 5.30, Krishna's in the forest. That's the origin of the 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> the original 9 to 5 is Sri Krishna in the forest. But it's not like this world, 9 to 5. <laughs> This world, 9 to 5, oh, everyone's praying for the weekend. Krishna's praying for, when is it going to be 9 o'clock? Do I have to really come home? That's what he's thinking. So in the spiritual world, he's eternally performing these passages. In this world, as a little boy, they didn't want to let him go out of the forest. Why? Mother Yashoda is very protective. 
Oh my Lala Krishna, if he goes to the forest, who knows what will happen? Already here, Drinavarta, Putana, Sakadasura, so many demons have come. But Krishna was saying, Mother, if I don't go to the forest, I'm going against our, our family tradition and our line. I'll be breaking our maryad, our responsibility. Please let me go to the forest and follow my forefathers in taking care of the cows. No, Lala, when you're older, you know, like Mother always wants child to stay in her own arms. Mm -hmm. Krishna, when you're older, you can go. He said, no, I must go, Mother. Even when he was three, four years old, he wanted to go, he wanted to go. So finally, they consulted Purnamasi Devi. Krishna said, oh, Purnamasi Devi, please convince my mother. And they consulted Purnamasi Devi. And she said, you know, Mother Yashoda, sometimes, you know, you see, even here the demons have come. Trinavarta came, you sat down Krishna for a moment and he came. So really what you should be thinking is how to make Krishna more strong. That's, you know, a lesson in life. Not to become overly protective, but to help strengthen. Because danger is always going to be there no matter what you do in life. So become more strong. And she said, don't worry, Baladev is very strong. He will always be with Krishna. Baladev, Sudam, Sridam, all the coward boys will be with Krishna. So let him go. So finally, Madhya Shoda said, okay, but we'll also go. Nanda Baba will go. Everyone will go. <laughs> and then Krishna thought, oh. If anyone has gone through, you know, childhood and become a teenager, you always want to be with your parents or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go on a plate. Let's go with our friends. Go, let's go have a fun time. And dad and mom are coming too. <laughs> Grandma and grandma are coming too. Auntie and uncles are coming too. Krishna's thinking, oh man. <laughs> Purnamasi, please. So he said, no, 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 no. Let Krishna go and swim in. If he, if he goes with you there, he'll be shy. But if he goes alone, he'll swim in the river, he'll play in the fields, and he'll become strong. So let him go just once. Just let us see how it goes. So finally, she agrees to let Krishna go to the forest. So this is in this world. Prakrit Vrindavan. In the spiritual world, every day Krishna goes to the forest. So when Krishna leaves, we were describing yesterday, right? How Srila Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada were in Krishna Balaram having Harikata, and then Gurudev started Kirtan around this time of day. Krishna, Krishna. This is the third pair of the names, and this corresponds to this pastime. Krishna, Krishna. Gurudev was singing Kirtan. And to weep, Shri Prabhupada began to weep, <coughs> and they began to hear the sound of Sri Krishna going to the forest right there at Ramanreti. All the devotees became filled with this spiritual ecstasy. So Krishna now is with all his friends. All his friends have been waiting outside his house since early morning, like we do sometimes for Mangalarti in certain <coughs> temples. When in some temples in Vrindavan, Krishna doesn't do Mangalarti till later. Why? Some temples, Krishna likes to rest longer, like Banti Bihari and some other temples. So everyone's waiting outside. When's Darshan? When's Darshan? When's Darshan? Mm -hmm. All the Sakas, and not only the Sakas, the peacocks, the cows, the cuckoos, the parrots, everyone's waiting. When will I have Krishna's Darshan? Finally, Krishna comes out from his room, and he's, see, he's being like a king, but really like a prince. Everyone is there outside of Bhavan waiting to greet him. You can imagine like, you know, the like Simba, the Lion King. <laughs> Everyone's assembled around waiting to see Krishna. And Krishna's beautiful smile and he says, okay, let us go. So all the cowherd boys, how many cowherd boys? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of coward boys. But the speciality of Braj is that it's always intimate. There's never a crowd like we, like in Braj Mandal Parikrama, you know, everyone's trying to get through the door. There's 10,000 people. In Braj, the Dham expands and contracts as necessary and it's always intimate. You always feel like you're right there with Krishna. All the Sakas. So Krishna begins to go to the forest. <clears throat> Nanda Jashoda, 
and all the parents and the grandparents, Parijanya, Variyasi, they think, let's go with him also. And so Krishna's going, and also all the calves have been let out. So they're all running along with Krishna. And Krishna is still a little bit contained because his parents are still there, his <laughs> elders are there. So as they're going through the pathways of the village of Braj towards the forest, everyone's following them like in a grand procession. And behind Krishna, everyone's following. And also on the pathways, everyone's waiting to see Krishna, giving him drinks, giving him garlands, smiling, trying to have some sweet interaction. Like when Gurudev would come from his kata to his room, everyone's waiting. We can see this reflection, right? I was reading today from Holland, our, our 21st volume of our Bhaktivedanta uh, anthology. Gurudev was saying, Guru is one who transfers your love and attraction to Sri Krishna. And so therefore, Guru comes and you offer your heart to Guru. But if Guru doesn't transfer that to Krishna, he's a cheater. So sometimes we see that with Sri Guru. Oh, Gurudev is going from the pavilion and thousand devotees are all lined up waiting to see him. And just hoping for a moment with Gurudev, for Gurudev to pat them on the head, to put their his hand on their shoulder. I remember when I was, especially as a kid, you get that opportunity. I remember Gurudev to put his hand on your shoulder and you walk with him to his room. So you can imagine what it's like for Krishna. All the Brijabhasis are so eager to see him. They're thirsty like Chataka birds waiting for the rain to fall in the Swati Nakshatra constellation. They won't take anything else but Krishna Darshan. So as Krishna comes through, it's like a desert that is now being showered with this truth inundation of nectar and they're drinking up the darshan the beauty of Sri Krishna and so Krishna goes out of the the village towards the forest as he goes and he goes finally Purnama says let us come back let him go and so reluctantly very with great <clears throat> difficulty Nanda Baba Tashoda and everyone they wait and they let Krishna go until they cannot see him any longer. So what is Krishna experiencing? He has great love. We should not limit the un, you know, understanding of Krishna's love for his parents. But also, you know, meeting in separation. <laughs> so finally, when Krishna is out of sight, he transforms. Like wild boys finally able to be let loose. So what happens next? Hmm. Just describe that. It's like baby elephants who've been let out of their cage. <laughs> A bunch of little baby elephants, you can imagine, you know? Hundreds of thousands, of, all the sakas are like little baby elephants. <laughs> and they've become intoxicated <laughs> with nectar. So they just start like bouncing off the walls, you know, they just start bouncing around. Hare Krishna. Some cushions there, you can sit on Hare Krishna. So all the, the coward boys become like these very boisterous, they're bouncing along. So then Kaviraj Goswami describes something very sweet. He says, <clears throat> The cowherd boys begin to imitate Krishna's behaviors because they're in this mood of sakyara. Sakyara means very playful, very jovial, very hasya, full of joking and laughter. So the cowherd boys begin to tease Krishna as they're very rambunctious, you know, running around. Some of the cowherd boys, they pretend to be like Krishna and because the ones especially who know Krishna's heart, Krishna's enjoying Sakyaras, but really he's eager for meeting Shumati Radhika. So some of the coward boys that know Krishna's internal state, you know, it said when, when Krishna goes to steal the gopi's clothes, he takes some coward boys that know his heart and his mood. Man, buddhya, hankar, chitta. Those are Krishna's coward boys also. So they know Krishna's heart, Priya Narma Sakas. So some coward boys, what do they do? They stand like Krishna and one stands like Mother Yashoda. <laughs> and Krishna's standing there very peacefully in front of Mother Yashoda, but his eyes 
are darting back and forth. Where? Towards the gopis. And some other coward voice, they go, as he's going through the pathway of Braj, into the forest, there's many trees and creepers. So some coward boys, they go behind the creepers and they go, and then they send sidelong glances, pretending to be the gopis, teasing Krishna, <laughs> as if to say, we know what you're thinking. So Kavirat Goswami describes like this. Coward boys, some of the coward boys tease Krishna like this. The other coward boys, some of them, go down on all fours and pretend to be like the cows. And they're running along on all fours, bouncing around, <clears throat> rolling on the ground and imitating the cows and calves. Some coward boys, they pick up sticks and begin to fight with each other. And some begin to throw, it's described like weapons at each other. What are the weapons? They get flower clusters like bombs full of pollen and they throw them at each other and they explode like holy bombs, flower bombs. Some of the coward boys, <clears throat> they began to argue and debate with Krishna. So in this way, all the different coward boys are um, full of this kind of like uncontrolled joyfulness exhibiting itself in many ways. Like we say in our path of sadhana, sukeshu anurigatasriya. Don't be too overwhelmed and open when you're overjoyed. But this doesn't apply to Krishna and the Sakas. Krishna, sukeshu anurig, that doesn't apply to Krishna and the Sakas. So like I said, some Sakas, they're overjoyed. And so those who know Krishna's heart, Kavirat Goswami says, some of them imitate the gopis, Teasing Krishna, casting sidelong glances, and some imitate Krishna in front of Madhya Shoda, unable to. You know, trying to maintain his composure, but really agitated, restless. <clears throat> and so Krishna is going into the forest. So now on the other side, Brinda Devi. Brinda Devi is preparing for Krishna to arrive. So we can think of Brinda Devi. Who is Brinda Devi? She is the goddess of the forest of Brindavan. Tulsi Maharani is one of her manifestations. So you can see how Tulsi Devi and Brinda Devi, they're both connected to Brindavan. Brindavan is that place where Tulsi Maharani is present. <clears throat> so Brinda Devi is now like a grand uh, maestro conducting a symphony. And she's saying, she, she calls to everyone and says, Now quickly Krishna is coming. Quickly Krishna is coming. And so she begins to instruct everyone to perform their part in that grand symphony. All the moving and non-moving creatures and entities and associates. So she says to the trees, quickly, Krishna is coming. You should blossom and smile for Krishna with your flowers. You should rain down nectar from your flowers. All your fruits, the juicy fruits, should be ready now to offer to Krishna. All the birds, you should begin to sing. The peacocks should begin to dance. The deers should begin to frolic and dance. So in this way, she, she instructs all of the inhabitants of the forest of Braj. Quickly, she says, now your time of separation is over. Sri Krishna is entering the forest of Braj. So this is that time of day in the mid-morning. <clears throat> so as Krishna comes closer now, Brinda Devi is present and everyone begins to... It's just like they're waiting for her signal because they follow guidance, Anugatya. But really... They're already overwhelmed with joy, and so it's like everything is experiencing ecstatic symptoms as Krishna enters the forest. We see the picture, and Srila Prabhupada uh, had this beautiful painting, right? Krishna running through the forest with the cowherd boys, Balaram, and the calves. And the forest is experiencing ecstatic symptoms to greet Krishna. And we also see this beautiful painting here. Uh, this is called Venugit. This is the beautiful painting of Krishna entering the forest. And how Shumati Radhika and the gopis are there. Actually, they're there, Gurudev describes actually like by mood. Not actually directly even there. But Krishna is experiencing there, and they're also in this is in one kind of prakosht. <clears throat> so now we can imagine Krishna is just beginning to enter the forest. Brinda Devi has just struck up that grand symphony. The bees. The cuckoos, the, 
peacocks, the parrots. The parrots, what are they doing? They're reciting beautiful Vedic verses, glorifying Sri Krishna. Not like Om Sasra Sirsa Purusha, no. Sweet, not opulent mood, Madhurya mood. What is Brindavan? Brindavan is the highest opulence. But what is that highest opulence? Highest sweetness. Sweetness is opulence. There's a story Guru they would tell of someone who worshipped Lord Shiva. Quick story. Someone worshipped Lord Shiva for opulence. And so finally Shiva gave him the boon. He said, I'll give you whatever you want. He said, whatever I touch should turn to gold. He said, do you really want it? Yes. Tatashtu, let it be so. So he was so happy. Oh, whatever I touch will turn to gold. He touched his cup, it became gold. Yes. Touched a spoon, it became gold. I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. He was overjoyed. And seeing him so ecstatic, his young little boy, oh, father's so happy. And he ran into his father's arms and jumped into his lap. And oh, the boy turned to gold. Oh, no, alas, alas. Weeping, put his hands to his face and he turned to gold. <laughs> what is the use of that opulence? Nothing. Without sweetness, without love and affection, this is the real opulence. So in Braj, this is the opulence of Braj, the sweetness, the love and affection. Every particle of dust in Vrindavan is Chintamani, wish-fulfilling touchstone. Every tree is Kalpa Riksha, wish-fulfilling tree. The cows are Kamadena, wish-fulfilling cows. Giriraj fulfills all desires, but what is the only desire of the Brajabhasis? Let me always serve Krishna. Let me always be with Krishna. So therefore, even though everything can fulfill any desire, their only desire is let me serve and be with Krishna. Why? Because this is the opulence of Braj. Like we're talking today, oh, such nice fruits, such nice atmosphere. The Lord has given us sun. The Lord has given us wind or air to breathe, water to drink, the sunshine, friendships, so many, the bounty of the earth, and yet we are ungrateful. <clears throat> so Gurudev said, true morality is developing love of God and gratitude for everything he has given us, and then honor to all. That is real morality. Without Krishna, there's no morality. So this opulence of Braj is the beauty of the forest of Vrindavan and everything in Vrindavan. This is the opulence of Braj. So now, what is Krishna famous for? What can we see in this painting? Krishna is running with the cowherd boys. Everyone's playing, joking, teasing each other, throwing flower bombs at each other, fighting with sticks, wrestling, playing, imitating the cows, running on all fours like wild elephant cubs. And Vrinda Devi is conducting the grand symphony of Vrindavan and the cuckoos and the parrots and the peacocks and the bees, the river Jamuna. Everyone is, is involved in that grand symphony. And then Krishna raises his flute to his lips. He plays with his flute. So we cannot imagine that, the beauty of that flute song of Krishna. Said so that flute song of Krishna is the origin of our Gayatri Mantra. Kling, Kalam Beach. And that manifests in this world as Om. And it manifests in this world as all the scriptures and all the Harikata of our great Acharyas and teachers. That's all the manifestations of Krishna's flute calling us back to him in Braj. Therefore, it's said that to properly preach and give Harikata, you must become clean and inside, like Krishna's flute, that Krishna's message can transmit through us. Guru's message can transmit through us, that we can be this messenger of our Guru Varga. So Krishna's playing this flute, that divine song of Krishna's flute, it is like the soul has been thirsty for millions of lifetimes. And it's like hearing that sound of Krishna's flute, it's like the first time you've ever been, the first time you're ever able to drink or, or taste anything sweet. And so it's just filling up the heart with that transcendental nectar. And so as Krishna plays the flute, he's just starting to enter into the forest. And everyone's in the middle of this grand symphony, but it's like everything stops. 
being stopped at the moment. Why? Nothing can compare to the beauty of Sri Krishna's food song. So you can just imagine everyone becomes like Munis. You can just sit and think. For a few minutes, you can imagine that mood of all the residents of the forest of Vrindavan. They're hearing the sound of Krishna's flute and pray for that time when will I hear that sound of Krishna's flute? Narutam Das Thakur sings, Kave Shri Krishna Rabangsi Suni Bogo Hari Bol Boyara Madana Mohana Hari Bogo Hari Bol Boyara Madana Mohana E rupe brajera pate chali bogo. E rupe brajera pate chali bogo. Hari bol boyara madana mohana. Hari bogo. Oh, that madana mohan, the enchanter of millions of cupids, is entering the forest of Vrindavan. When will I also? Go to Vrindavan. And then will I, Kabe Shri Krishna Ravangsi Sunebu go? When will that sound of Krishna's food enter my ears? Bhaktivinoda Thakur similarly sings. <clears throat> that time, when will that time be that? The sound, Emona Shamoy Muralira Gan Bashibe Edashi Kane. Emona Shamoy. Muralira Ghan Vashi Bedasi Kane Anande Mativo Shakala Bulivo Shri Krishna Vamsi Ragane Chintamani Moe Radha Kunja Tata Tahi Kunja Shata Shata so what is Krishna's flute song singing? What is Krishna's song? What is that cling? What is that om? What is that kam beach? Gurudev describes cling. He describes that that sound of Krishna's flute is calling one thing only. Radhe Radhe Boli Murali Dakibe Madhya Ishwari Nama Radhe Radhe Boli Murali Dakibe Madhya Ishwari Nama Radhe 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 That flute song of Krishna is calling only one thing Radhe Where's my Shiradharani? This is what Krishna is thinking. So before, as Krishna is entering the forest, Brinda Devi, she instructs, O Brindavan forest, please soothe the heart of Sri Krishna who is experiencing separation of Radharani by showing them your beauty, which will remind him of Sri Radharani. This is Brinda Devi's instruction. Show your full beauty that will remind Krishna of the beauty of Sri Radha. And so as Krishna is entering the forest, he's reminded of that, and he plays the flute calling Sri Radharani's name. And so hearing that flute song, everyone becomes stunned. Kaviraj Goswami describes the birds who are singing so sweetly a moment before, their voice becomes choked. All the birds, you can imagine all the trees, all the hundreds of thousands of birds at once. It's very strange to hear birds stop talking. <laughs> birds love to talk but all of a sudden the whole forest everyone becomes a muni a sage and is stunned the calves and the cows who are chewing grass they, they're in the middle of a bite <laughs> they stop chewing they become stunned it's said that sattvic bobs all the symptoms of ecstasy appear in their bodies and they get some like viparit function. 
The Jamun is flowing one way, it begins to flow another way. Hmm. The birds, which nature is to chitter chatter all the time, they become, and to move about, you know, you see birds flittering around, they become motionless, and their voice chokes up. And the creepers, let's describe the creepers, they all begin to heripulate. All the creepers are experiencing ecstatic symptoms. And many deer, enchanted by the sound of Krishna's flute, have come. And then, <clears throat> Krishna, as he's playing the flute, he sees, he begins to see everything in Braj, and it begins to remind him of Srimati Radhika. So he sees the, the doe, especially the deer, very beautiful long eyes, right? We say doe-eyed. And they remind Krishna of the eyes of Srimati Radhika. So they've come close by attraction to Krishna's flute. And even though their husbands are there, their eyes are to going to Krishna. And the husbands are saying, yes, we know your heart, go to Krishna. <laughs> so that's why sometimes Srimati Radhika praises the deer, saying, you are more fortunate than me. Because your husbands allow you to come directly to Krishna and for mm -hmm. him to pet you and him to embrace you. So you're so fortunate. Radharani, she feels this humility. I don't have any good fortune. Just how, how fortunate you are. And so Krishna is playing this flute. Everyone is coming around him and he, everywhere he looks, he sees Shumati Radhika. The trees and the flowers and the fruits, they all remind him of different parts of the transcendental form of Shumati Radhika. The peahens dancing remind him of the loosened braid of Shumati Radhika. And all the different flowers and fruits all remind Krishna of Shumati Radhika. So then Krishna he plays this flute for some time and then he stops. And then the moment he stops, it's like sometimes in Kirtan, you know, we have everything going and then there's like a pause for a very beautiful like an Allah or something. And it's so beautiful that everyone becomes stunned and just lets like that soloist, right? In a symphony. Sometimes someone comes out and just <clears throat> does their kind of solo performance, whether whatever, you know, expert musician. So everyone just stops and is stunned. and Not just in wonder at the appreciating Krishna's song, but really their hearts have been won over. Why? Upanishad says, Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eko Bhukunam Yogitadatikam. Krishna alone can satisfy all desires. All living entities in part are partial to Sri Krishna. So, therefore, that quality in us of Shakti, Parinamvad, the transformation of the Lord's divine Shakti, that is by its intrinsic nature attracted to Sri Krishna. And only Krishna can satisfy our heart's desire. So Krishna, then he stops playing his flute, and then everything immediately comes back, you could say, in even greater enthusiasm. So all the peacocks are dancing, and all the trees are erupting in smiles. What are the trees smiling? <coughs> all the trees, how do the trees smile? They're like spontaneously blossoming, and all the whole trees are becoming covered in their blossoms in flowers and every tree different kinds of flowers and so it's like it's like fireworks in branch <laughs> but what are the fireworks the flowers of Vrindavan and all the trees <laughs> and not only are they blossoming but they're as Krishna is now walking under the canopy of the trees they're in a very s gentle shower bathing Sri Krishna with nectar and so they're, they're now, it's like when someone does a very beautiful performance and you just want to give them your heart and give them a gift. Mm. And so the trees begin to offer all their gifts to Krishna. The flowers, the nectar, and the juicy fruits. The juicy fruits that remind Sri Krishna of Srimati Radhika. They're offering themselves to her, her bimba fruit-like lips, all her bodily features. And then Krishna is, it said that especially the trees... They're offering themselves to Krishna, and the nectar is cooling and satisfying his thirst, the fruits, his hunger. And then the gentle breeze is blowing, and Sri Krishna is feeling great uh, bliss in this. Why? He's feeling like that breeze 
is bringing him what? The fragrance of Shrimati Radhika. Therefore, Acharya sing. Dira Samire Jamuna Tire Basati Vane Vanamali Tina Payodhana Parisara Martana Chanchalakara Jugasali e Rati Shukashari Gatama Vishari Madhana Mano Haravesha Madhana Mano Haravesha Dhira Samire Jamuna Tire gentle breeze coming from the Jamuna, Krishna feels like this is Shrimati Radhika's embrace. And it's carrying the fragrance from Shrimati Radhika. So Krishna, with great, it's like someone who you love has entered into your place and you've offered all your gifts to them. And so then when they're satisfied with your gifts, because they love you, then they begin to speak very sweetly with you. This is the exchange of love. So these six exchanges of love, Krishna is performing with the forest of Vrindavan. Krishna is giving his gift. What is the gift of Krishna? His darshan. That darshan that steals the heart and then his flute playing. And the forest of Vrindavan is offering all its gift. It's singing for Krishna by the bees and the cuckoos and the birds. And, it, and the parrot's praising Sri Krishna and is offering all its fruits and its flowers and its streams of nectar. The Jamuna's waves are washing Sri Krishna's lotus feet and offering lotus flowers at Krishna's lotus feet. And so then Krishna begins to speak very sweetly with the forest. Just like a king who is having darshan of all his subjects. Oh, banyan tree, is everything auspicious? Oh, tamal tree, are you well? O cuckoo, O parrots. In Hindi we say, Sab kushal. Everything is auspicious. Is everything good? And so Krishna begins to speak with each and every one. And everyone feels like they're represented. Why? He speaks with like the leaders of all the different, the deer, the peacocks, the cuckoos. They come in his hand and he pets them and speaks. Oh, is everything good? You know, like Gurudev, when he would speak with you, you think, how does Gurudev know everyone? He has 100,000 disciples, but Gurudev would say, oh, is your husband well? And you would say your name. Oh, your aunt is sick. Is she getting better? Oh, is everything, is, how is your daughter in school? How is your son? So Krishna knows everyone. And in Braj, everyone has relationships. So he's asking each of the birds, oh, and he knows them by name. Oh, yes, your relatives are well. Oh, tree, your family is good. And so Krishna begins to speak like this. This is called Guya Makyati Prichiti. It's one of the exchanges of love. To speak with each other. And then Bhunkte Bhujayate Chaiva to share with each other some kind of food stuff. So Krishna now is speaking with the tree and speaking with the cuckoo, speaking with the deer, speaking with the monkeys. <laughs> and then all the different, especially the, the birds and the monkeys, they all try to start bringing Krishna a gift. They jump up in the tree and bring him the ripest fruits. And the birds collect different flowers and offer them at Krishna's feet. And in this way, Krishna is entering into the forest of Braj entering into the forest of Braj. So we can do one short little, uh, I'll do a short little kirtan and we'll